Hi, I'm the Reverend David Marshall, priest and minister at St. Dunstan's Episcopal Church in Shoreline, Washington, the church that feeds people. This is the third session in our Freedom in Christ Through Forgiveness class. Today we're going to talk about forgiving the unforgivable. Sometimes forgiveness seems impossible. When you're not ready to forgive, or you just haven't done it yet, or it just doesn't seem possible to forgive someone for some terrible deed or action, it's just too big. So it's important to remember that forgiveness is not all of those other things like condoning or forgetting or reconciling that we talked about in the first session. But it is very difficult to achieve even in simple situations. In session two, we talked about the stories we tell and the meaning we assign to the things that happen to us. We talked about the need to assess what really happened and take responsibility for the story we have been telling about that. Sometimes it's painful to even remember the actual event. Sometimes we have so much anger or sadness or fear or all three that we can't bear to look back, to truly look at what happened, who did what, who said what, etc. You just have to do the best you can. This is a process that we will repeat as often as necessary. And remember, you're not in this alone. Forgiveness is a spiritual discipline that we enter into faithfully, trusting that God is present. If you find yourself unreasonably or too painfully reactivated, you may want to work with a therapist. In some cases, we re-experience the trauma of a past event rather than remembering the incident. It's very difficult to forgive if you can't remember without reliving the injury again. So how do we begin the process of forgiveness when we can't even imagine forgiving? Well, the first thing I want to say is be gentle with yourself. Sometimes all we can achieve for now is to not want to destroy the person. Sometimes the best we can do is to hope for the ability to forgive or the willingness to forgive someday. Sometimes the best we can bring ourselves to pray for is the ability to forgive. Dear God, I cannot forgive now, but I am willing to be able to forgive. Help me to get there. Remember that forgiveness is not a feeling. You may not feel that you can, can or have forgiven until much later in the process. First, you have to make the choice to forgive for your own health. You choose to forgive. The feelings follow. Trust that God will do more than we can ask or imagine if we trust in God's love and forgiveness. There is no surefire method to forgiving. What we strive to achieve is an attitude of forgiveness. This is a compassionate and humble approach to relationship and to the conflicts that every relationship has. And here are some things that can help. First, recognize the need to forgive as we forgive others. Choose to begin the process of forgiving, even if you're not able to forgive yet. Trust that this is a process and you will get to the end. Pray to God for strength, wisdom, and guidance. God can do more than we can ask or imagine. Assess your feelings, fears, and resentments. What really happened? What part of that hurt you? Identify what and who you need to forgive as specifically as possible. What are the resentments or grudges or hurt feelings that you still hold? Did you have an expectation that was not met or that was frustrated? 
Did you feel insulted or betrayed in some way? Was your honor compromised? Were you shamed? Was there an implicit contract or covenant that was broken? There are some helpful questions that help us move towards forgiveness. Without actually forgiving the person, try this exercise. Ask yourself, what other possible explanation might there be? Is there an explanation that has nothing to do with you personally for what that person did? or why they did it? Look at the situation from the other person's perspective in as generous a manner as you are able. You may have to do this more than once. Look at your own actions, reactions, and feelings. Here are three helpful questions. Who is aware of this situation? How am I complicit in this situation? Who is in control of this situation? Recognize that the other person probably did the best he or she could in the circumstances. This is part of recognizing the reality of the situation. Stuff happens. People do things that hurt us without setting out to hurt us. Some people do set out to hurt you, but that's less common. Movement towards forgiveness might be a less violent revenge fantasy. Can you let go of the need or desire for revenge? Can you maybe leave justice and judgment to God? Can you let go of the hope that God will get them in the end? And ultimately, can you wish them well? If the answer to any of these questions is still no, Pray that God will give you the desire to forgive and the ability to choose to start the process. Own your own feelings about this. Give yourself credit for the progress you've made and then plan to repeat the process prayerfully as many times as necessary. Sometimes we just need to move on more wisely, not the same as cynicism, but moving on more wisely, more like a wiser form of trusting. If you know that someone is likely to hurt you again or to behave badly again, you can still forgive them, but you don't set yourself up to be hurt again. And then there's the ultimate step. Trust that God can do what we cannot, even in our own hearts. Pray for the courage to forgive. Pray for the compassion to forgive and pray for the humility to forgive. So let's talk about monsters. Can they or should they be forgiven? Some things are just too horrible to forgive, aren't they? On October 2nd, 2006, a gunman entered an Amish one-room schoolhouse in Nickel Mines, Pennsylvania, and shot 10 children. Five of them died. He then killed himself in front of the children. The Amish parents forgave the murderer and even visited his family to extend their sympathy and condolence for their loss. Why did the Amish forgive the murderer of their children. Well, letting go of grudges is, deeply, is a deeply rooted value in Amish culture, which remembers forgiving martyrs, inclu including Dirk Willems and Jesus himself. The Amish willingness to forgo vengeance does not undo the tragedy or pardon the wrong, but rather constitutes a first step toward a future that is more hopeful. How could they do that? Perhaps they were trusting in God. Ultimately, that school was torn down and a new school was built in that same location. 
We hear stories of families forgiving the drunk driver that killed their teenage child. How do families forgive the murderers of their children? Why do they do that? Can the process of forgiveness we described earlier work in these unimaginable cases? That's a difficult question. But ultimately, when we hold on to resentment, even for these unimaginable things, we're the one that pays the price. It, 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 there's a cost in our own hearts. Our own souls are damaged by holding on to that resentment. So ultimately, forgiveness is about freeing ourselves to live, to live more fully, to live more abundantly, to have a capacity to love. Sometimes what we need to do is to be able to forgive ourselves. Forgiving others is hard. Forgiving yourself can be even harder. We hold shame over past failures. We fear that we are not good enough or capable of repentance. We fear that if we forgive ourselves, we're as likely to make the same mistake as someone else. Holding on to the resentments towards ourself the same way and for some of the same reasons we hold on to resentments towards others. There are all kinds of reasons why it's hard to forgive yourself, but God has forgiven you, whether you're ready or not. Jesus came to give us a new life, a new way of knowing and loving God here and now before we got all our stuff together, before we figured life out, before we became perfect human beings in some, un, uh, some wonderful way, Jesus came to us in our broken state. While we were still shameful sinners, God knows that we need to be forgiven. Well, you need to forgive yourself too. Sometimes this is really an act of faith. Trust that God does forgive those who are repentant. I can remember a time when I was miserable for weeks because I felt so bad about one of the failures in my own life. I was sure that God would never forgive me. The real problem turned out to be that I wasn't willing to forgive myself. Assessing your fears, feelings, and resentments is the first step to forgiving yourself. Forgiving yourself is a process just as forgiving someone else is a process. Pray to God for the strength to forgive yourself. You may need help. Sometimes you need someone that you trust to talk to or perhaps even a therapist to help you work through your thoughts and feelings. Humility allows us to admit our own errors shortcomings or failures or even sins and forgiveness frees us to learn and move on. The ability to forgive yourself is vital to learning an attitude of forgiveness towards others. Let yourself off the hook just as you need someone else to let you off the hook. Let yourself off the hook. Do you need to ask God for, for forgiveness? Consider the rite of reconciliation. Sometimes that ritual can be a great gift, an assurance that God does forgive us. Well, thank you for watching this presentation on forgiveness. In the final session of this class, we will look at moving on how do we move on from past hurts and resentments? How do we live into the freedom that comes with forgiving? You can find more about our classes, our feeding ministries, and our worship at sdchp.org. Thank you.